Our first story, commuters on the Cape Coast Trifuprasu Road are stranded as the major bridge linking the two cities have broken down. The Ghana Highway Authority is asking people to use other alternative routes to get to their destinations. Richard Kojonyako has more on this report. So this is Jokwa and behind me is a bridge linking Cape Coast to Kifupraso and this bridge is broken. So the people you see here are unable to cross from this side to the Cape Coast end of the road. Same as the people that are supposed to cross from Cape Coast to Kifupraso and it's really got many people stranded around this place. So the building you see here is a building of the CEO of Exim Bank, Lawrence Ajinsim, and we are told by the National Disaster Management Organization that three of the vehicles that were parked in the compound have all been washed away, and you can see how devastated this has become. In fact, tourists that commute on this particular stretch on a daily basis, they are also stranded as well, so they have had to return. This is um, a decreational group, which is coming from the United States of America, with different partners, some from Georgia, some from other parts of the world, to educate Ghanaian teachers. And as a matter of fact, as part of the program, they are supposed to see some size in Ghana and how beneficial it will be to them. And then on our calendar for the week, we are supposed to visit Takum National Park. And as a matter of fact, this is a disheartening issue, where some buildings are in the waterways, which causes um, a lot of uh, natural disaster by removing a part of the road out of the east coast which will now make us not being able to reach our dreams for the week. Well, we were headed to Kakum, which is what I hear is the uh, foot, footbridge that you get to cross. And so we were coming from La Paz, which uh, is about three hours away. So now because of this incident, we have to turn around and go, uh, go back the other way. So a uh, little bit disappointing. Uh, we're here from America touring, so we wanted to see uh, you know, some of the great sites here in Ghana, but unfortunately we have to turn around and go back the other way. So. Wow, so tell me how frustrating it's been for you having to travel three hours all the way to go to see Kakum National Park and then here you are. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little frustrating, you know, it's upsetting, you know, especially wanting to see it and not being able to. You know, so it's, it's, it's kind of frustrating. You know. Will you find an alternative route to get to Kapum or you uh, might have to change plans? No, yeah, we're going to change plans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to change plans. The Ghana Highways Authority has told them to use another end of the road at the Yamransa if they want to go to Tupraso and the others. We have been engaging the National Disaster Management Organization about the extent of the situation. They've been telling us that um, they are praying that uh, it does not rain egg anymore so that things will not degenerate into something else. Around 3 a.m. We, we, we had a report that uh, this river is flowing, has overflowed by break some houses and divide the bridge into two. So people from Praso cannot go, uh, cannot come to Cape Coast. People from Cape Coast going to uh, Praso, Dunkaofi also cannot have any access road to go. So when we came here, we have assessed the place. There's nothing we can do at the moment until the water subsides down a bit before we can know how the damage and how uh, we can do something to help uh, the passengers and uh, those people who have already crossed to the other side to, to come back. Uh, it's a very uh, hard, hard situation, but we thank God there is no loss of life. Mm. But properties, we had a building here for Ezin Bank CEO, as you say. It has about five cars there. Three of the cars have been submitted or washed away. Washed away by the river. Oh, okay. Then the other two are the washing machines, you know, personal items. A lot of things, been, you can't mention have it. Been washed away by That's the river. It. So we pray that uh, the, river, the rain will start down and we can know what to do. It's not only this place that this thing is happening. It appears that the overflow of this river, slowly, has also caused some other devastation and anchor for 
Elmina and the other places as well. So it's really a precarious and a pretty difficult situation that the people here are facing. We are calling for some intervention because the commuters on this road say this is a major and an important road such that this problem needs fixing as soon as possible. <laughs> The same thing is, in Suena, I told you, being told, we say that. Me, I sense I may feel chrome, how am I a woman? No, me, who be say that. The me buy and bechere, you know, nature say disaster is, you know, a family literary idea, conforme breed, I assess it. A be went to me and done, I be. And now, you share any other major road, bridge, and also, I'm a mobile and else, I'm a mobile who. In Suena, I say no. And I will buy any I am a maid in Chahima, Yadin, you know, so if you are, you see a bahon, and you see a ketua. We stay a while longer on bridges. Government has announced a new date for the commencement of the reconstruction and expansion of the Accra Tema motorway. Greater Accra Director of Ghana Highway Authority, Engineer Emmanuel Udai, tells Joy News. The six-lane highway project will start in two months. This comes after the completion of the damaged Laklakba section of the highway. Michael Ashali reports. We promise, we promise that you know the government made a promise to the good people of this country that the bridge was going to be reinstated and reopened at six a.m. on Friday, and exactly six a.m. on Friday on the dot that has been delivered. Traffic on the motorway lesson after works on the Laklakpa Bridge comes to an end. Before, the bridge was faulty with rods sticking out of the concrete. A section of the road was blocked to make way for repairs. In two weeks, the bridge was broken and rebuilt. Roads Minister Amwakwata was there to supervise the work and see to the official reopening of the bridge. Life itself is a problem-solving process. Okay. So if, if there is little uh, pain, little inconvenience, it's part of life. The concrete for the bridge was cast in record time, taking just about 24 hours to cure. Motorists raised content. But Greater Accra Director of the Ghana Highways Authority, Engineer Emmanuel Odai, says the concrete sample had performed their test. Concrete undergoes the curing process, and it can be hastened. And that is the hasting process by adding an additive. And then the additive is what we've added to allow the curing process to hasten. And so yesterday we took what we call the cube, a portion of a sample to the lab, which has been crushed and it's, uh, it's overwhelming with the strength that was achieved. Um, our, it just went over the anticipated strength. We wanted 40 and it's over 60. And so we are happy. Meanwhile, the entire motorway is up for reconstruction and expansion. Government failed to meet the December 2021 and early 2022 deadlines. Now, a new timeline has been set. Yeah, you can imagine putting about 50 million now to patch the portals. The minister has assured us that within the next two months, now as we are talking about August, they will, be, they will cut short. Why would we go and push a lot? Yes, sometimes we have to wait about the, the lives of the people and then that's all some interventions are put in. Cut, cut short for what? The expansion of the motorway? Yes, exactly so. The, the, the rehabilitation of the two whole motorway. Okay. That's what it is. The total okay. rehabilitation. Okay. I'm not saying the maintenance. Okay. It's not partial uh, reconstruction, but it's the total uh, reconstruction. We're going to widen the road and all that. Uh -huh. Kwesi Amwako Atta says there are plans to complete other major projects which will absorb the traffic congestion. It's part of the general scheme. You know that once, once we undertake the uh, reconstruction of such a major uh, uh, roadworks, obviously, you know, it goes without discussion that alternative arrangements would have been made. So a few meters that was blocked this week resulted in a gridlock with hundreds of motorists inconvenienced and frustrated. What will happen if the entire motorway, which spans 19 kilometers, is to be renovated? Motorists are hopeful alternative routes will be created to reduce the inconvenience. For Joy News, Michael Ashali, Tema Motorway. 
And away from Rhodes, a founding member of the governing New Patriotic Party, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, has described as shameful the finance minister's failure to show up in parliament to render account on how government spent the COVID-19 funds. Lois Asari joined the Arise Ghana group to confer with him on their impending demonstration and has come through with this report. The statesman questioned the rationale behind what he believes is a deliberate attempt to swerve the lawmakers. Dr. Nyaho Tamaklu says he doesn't know what the finance minister is hiding from Ghanaians who deserve such accountability. Look at the case just I listened to this morning. A whole finance minister being asked by parliament, representative of the people, that is what parliament is, to come and account for X amount of money. Whether it's COVID or whatever it is, I don't know. And he has been dilly dallying. I mean, it's shameful. Very shameful. What is he afraid of? You've had X amount of money for a particular project. Come and account for it. Then that's also is a problem. That speak will come out with a ruling. That until that is done, they are not going to listen to anything or they are not going to endorse anything from that particular ministry. I mean, this is shameful. This is very shameful. A whole minister of finance who claimed he can change this economy. That's what he told us. And some of us initially believed in him. Now look at the state of the economy. I think we are getting to the worst in Africa. Worst in Africa. I mean, it is shameful. If you have known this country before, when Kufour came, the, the economy was in tatters. Kufour was able to take measures to bring the economy back to its position. And even we became what? Uh, what, 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 what middle, income. middle income. Now look at where we are now. Kufour was able, I mean, Kufour time, you really see, he, he started with a lot of difficulties. But he was able to steer this country successfully. Luckily, we came into power again, and we have come to mess everything that Kufour was able to establish. So the young people, they should think twice whom they vote for. The former ambassador expressed concerns over what he describes as a deteriorating security setup of the country. According to him, the police service must flash out party militias who have invaded the service and are unable to act professionally. The police normally shouldn't have been carrying guns because it's not a force. The police is a service. If a relationship between the police and the citizenry should be very cordial. But I made a remark some time ago that setting up of these so-called militias by the political parties will create a problem for this country. And that is what is happening now. Dr. Nyaho Tawaklu called on the Inspector General of Police to lead a crusade of disbanding such party militias which he believes will make the police service work diligently and professionally. So the best advice that I will give is that the police should advise government, the IGP himself should advise government for these militias to be dissolved. The moment that is done, the police will have the power and ability to do their work as police men and not gun carrying police people. Those supposed to be carrying gun in this country are the military men, but even they have no right to open fire on civilians. Their duty is to defend this nation. The police sees to internal security and then the military ceases to extend our security. If that is allowed to operate, there will be peace in this country. Dr. Nyao Tamaklo advised young people to demand accountability from people they vote for 
since that is the only way to ensure Ghana gets better. Lois Asaris report for Join News. The minority in parliament is alleging that the Electoral Commission has plans of using the Ghana card as the voter's ID heading into the 2024 election. Commenting on the business statement presented by the majority leader, Osei Chairman Sabonsu, Deputy Ranking Member on the Communications Committee, Sam George, pushed for the House to, as a matter of urgency, bring the National Identification Authority to answer questions on the issuance of the cards so that eligible voters are not disenfranchised in 2024. Parliamentary correspondent Kwekwa Santi has more. Deadline for the registration of your Ghana card has been extended to 31st of July this year. After the initial deadline of March, the card has become an important document and government wants it to become the single identity document for all Ghanaians. The minority in parliament is now claiming that the ECE wants to use the card as a voter's ID for 2024. The Ministry of Communication has issued a deadline of 31st of this month, that 1st of July, they are going to deactivate SIM cards. The Bank of Ghana says that your money that is in your own account that you paid in from the 1st of July, you cannot access it without a Ghana card. And they are all taking reference to a legislative instrument from this house, LI2111. Even the Electoral Commission is preparing to bring us a CR that is to create a new voter's register using a Ghana card. But majority of our constituents today, some of them have registered since 2018. The National Identity Authority is unable to provide them their Ghana cards. So you have there the Ningo Pram Pram MP Sam George. He's also the deputy ranking member on the communi communications committee raising these specific allegations that the Electoral Commission intends to use the Ghana card as the voters' ID for the 2024 election. When he made these comments on the floor, um, not very usual of parliament, this does not become a minority majority debate. But its leader, minority leader Haruna Idrisu, spoke in support of the concerns that he had raised, challenging the majority leader to ensure that the sector ministers responsible will appear before the House and brief MPs on how the processes for Ghanaian citizens to acquire the Ghana card is going. The matter of the national ID card and even the contemplation of the Electoral Commission of Ghana to use it as basis for registration or for the conduct of the 2024 elections makes it a democratic imperative that every deserving Ghanaian has the national ID card. Any failure on their part will throw our democracy in jeopardy. And therefore, the matter he has raised in many areas, in fact, Mr. Speaker, normally I drive out of my house through the Tamale Regional uh, Office, popularly known as the Regional Coordinating Council. And on daily basis, as I leave town in the morning, I see queues of uh, old uh, men and women and young people just at the gate of the Regional Administration. When you ask, they say they are here to apply for National ID card. That public good must be made increasingly and easily available to the Ghanaian. Let's do some health-related stories now. The Ghana Health Service is racing against time to secure vaccines for poliomyelitis, which have been in shortage across the country for close to two months. The infection caused by the poliovirus hit a seven-year high in 2020, when the country recorded nearly 700 new cases, up from 376 in 2014. Though the Ghana Health Service has increased its polio vaccination campaign to get more babies immunized, the current shortage is threatening the fight with thousands of children now exposed to the disease. We'll hear from the head of the expanded program on immunization at the Ghana Health Service shortly. First, here's Martina Bukri's report on the situation in the northern region. There is a shortage of polio vaccines in the northern region. This has created panic among parents who have newborns who should have received the vaccine. The shortage comes at a time the northern region has discovered polio virus in some drains in Kabul Mago in the Tamale Metropolis and Nyanshegu in the Sanergo municipality. Some of the parents spoke to Joy News. Well, it is quite unfortunate 
But this is the sad reality that we are confronted with. It's been over a month and children are not being vaccinated for polio. We have gone around every facility in Northern region. And I mean, you can just have it, you see? The point of the matter remains that these vaccines are supposed to be given timelessly. And if the time elapses, and even the, the vaccines come, the train cannot take it if, 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 the, if, if the time is gone. So it's quite unfortunate. Perhaps I think that uh, it's time we began to drum home to every stakeholder that is involved in this process, the whole process that look, we need these vaccines and we need them badly. But Deputy Director of Public Health at the Northern Regional Health Directory, Dr. Hilario Sabewu, who confirmed the shortage, directed joint news to the National Manager Expanded Program on Immunization. Head of the EPI at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Kwame Amponsa Chianu, says the service is working to secure the vaccines by next week. So the current shortage um, came around, I think, about a week or two ago. And we've been struggling or we've been working hard to get polio into the country. Come uh, Monday, we'll receive polio. But, but uh, you're, you're saying Monday and then we'll, we'll take yeah, you Monday, on that yeah. just briefly. Mm -hmm. But what was the reason for the shortage? Is it what a global wave of shortage? Or what no, exactly no, is the global reason? Wave. We, the had an, we had an issue mm -hmm. with the manufacturer. Okay. And we were in the process of changing the manufacturer. But then later, uh, we advised that if we had to change that we needed to get another uh, kind of um, approval. And so it would be a complex thing. So we went back and the manufacturers now, in fact, there, were, there, were short, there was shortage there. And so we wanted to move away. Okay, so the manufacturer that produces for Ghana? Yes, for the one we, you, 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 we you tapped, into. Have, okay. tapped into, yes. Kind of. Had a shortage yes. and you wanted to move away. Yes. And that was the reason for the shortage? That yes, so in. we have had a long period of discussions and trying to get uh, them to produce and so okay. now it's ready okay. for pickup. Okay, so when are we, when are we getting it? On well, Monday we should get. That's Monday no, you next know, week, it's, next it's, week it's, it's a long process, you see. Pro first of all, it's, it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. You need to do what we call a forecast mm -hmm. okay. for 2022. Normally you do that in the previous year. Mm -hmm. So we did that in 2021. Okay. Somewhere in November, that's when you plan for your, your consignments. And they normally have lead times, six weeks, eight weeks, sometimes can go to 12 weeks yeah. uh, before they can produce. You know, it's not a simple production <laughs> like you go to the market <laughs> and then get it. So it's, it's a very complex process. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the bottom line is that we are getting the vaccines mm -hmm. by Monday. I guess the question would be that, especially because we do forecasting, uh, one would have thought that would have been able to preempt this gap before you know moving to move away and all that. That, that is that very true. Happened. So we predicted this about s almost six weeks ago, okay. and we started working on that. Okay. And so it's taking us a long time to get here. It's not just an overnight thing, mm -hmm. because if you have shortage in let's say two weeks and you get a replacement, lead time sometimes twelve weeks. So what it means is that the production started earlier on. And so it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a very short. Well, we've checked, we've checked a few of the hospitals. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I'm not going to mention the mm -hmm. names of the hospital, but um, a couple of the hospitals tell us that they had the shortage sometime around uh, May into June. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's that's. That's right. exactly what I'm saying, oh, that about, that's it, about two weeks. Okay, okay. well, well let's, mm -hmm. let's now talk about um, the implication of the shortage for mothers and so on who are looking to vaccinate um, their babies and all of that. What was the implication for them? Well, the implication going forward is not an issue. Mm. Previously, I mean, looking back, probably if there was a wild one lurking around them, probably yeah. uh, you'd probably get an outbreak or something. But normally it doesn't, it doesn't work like that because we still have a vaccine that protects against polio, okay. which we are still continuing. The Ministry of Health is stepping up its supervision of the activities of doctors and other personnel within the health sector. The Ministry says this has become necessary due to the increasing reports of ethical breaches by some health personnel.
professionals speaking at a ceremony to induct some 138 medical doctors and dentists in Accra. Deputy Health Minister Tina Mensah said government is rolling out a policy to check the excesses in professional behavior within the space. There's more in this report. A keen follower that is Deputy Health, Health Minister Tina Mensah speaking at the induction ceremony for some 138 newly graduated doctors. She wants the doctors to stick to their professional code of conduct. Recent data from labor monitoring agencies points to a gradual emigration of high-skilled health professionals from Ghana into Europe and other areas. Chairman of the Medical and Dental Council, Professor Paul Kwame Nyame, said Yes, this trend has been fueled by gaps in working conditions. I do not believe that the numbers going out now is a threat. I don't believe it's a threat. Of course, I mean, uh, so, some people like to travel. Some of us don't like to travel. Some people like to travel, so they like to take their chances outside. But don't, don't let us forget, with the Brexit in Britain especially, and also with the um, COVID, there's been a serious shortage in the... Uh, doctors in the West, and by West I mean Europe, uh, Britain, and the United States. And obviously these uh, countries offer, as far as remuneration is concerned, they offer higher uh, remuneration than we are able to offer in Ghana. So we'll expect people to want to take advantage of this. But I can assure you, I, I think um, we, are not, we, are, we don't face a threat now. Country's doctor to patient ratio still below the World Health Organization standard. That dean of the University of Ghana Medical School, Professor Margaret Lati, wants government to invest in expanding the existing infrastructure. For the training of uh, doctors and dentists, we are still um, behind our uh, um, WHO um, a recommended ratio of a doctor a patient ratio. It's, I think it's about one doctor to, I think, uh, 1,300, yes, and we, are, we still haven't achieved that. What we would like um, the private sector, uh, the public, and the government to help us to do is to expand the local training institutions. We have trained over 60 years. The University of Ghana Medical School is the oldest. We are 60 years this year, and our products are of high quality, but we are limited because we cannot, we cannot expand facilities. So we need government to help the um, local medical schools to expand in terms of infrastructure. For the newly inducted doctors, it is time to serve their nation. My name is Efwai Abajanteria um, from KNUST SMD. Um, I'm very elated actually. I'd, I'd like to say this is like one of the best days of my life. It's been a very long journey. Um, with so many ups and downs, but I'm very grateful, very grateful to God especially and my family and very elated about today. Caretaker Gender Minister Cecilia Abnadapa says the 68-day arrears old school feeding caterers have been paid. School caterers nationwide have for the past month withdrawn their services, demanding payment of about 234 million Ghana cities third term arrears of the 2021 academic year. The acting sector minister, while visiting some schools in the Ashanti region, revealed the outstanding amounts have been settled. There's more on this report. School feeding caterers across the country have for the past months laid down their twos, demanding that the government pays their 2021 third term arrears. They have also demanded an increase in the feeding grants for the pupils. The caterers threatened to abrogate their contracts with the government following the months of outstanding amounts owed by the government. But the government has revealed it has settled the arrears. During a visit to some public schools in the Ashanti region, the caretaker minister, Cecilia Abnadapa, said the caterers have been paid the 68-day work in arrears. She visited two public schools, including the four garrison school and the state experimental cluster of schools to ensure caterers provided meals for students. We are here, um, like uh, we did at the garrison schools, to make sure we monitor uh, the quality of food being given to the school kids or school children. We also want to talk to the teachers, the head of the institutions, and also the children themselves, so that the story will be complete. 
it's one thing for the coordinator to tell me, oh, we cook good food. We cook the best. We need to find out for ourselves. Yeah. Yes, we have. We owe 68 days. We have paid all. If you are talking about payment, it's been done. For Joy News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku reporting. A not-for-profit organization, Pencils of Promise, has intensified its literacy campaign with a program dubbed MPs Reading with Learners Project in the Volta and Eastern regions. The initiative will teach pupils in the basic schools how to read to enhance their academic performance. Fred Kwame Asari reports. Participants of the Ghana Agricultural Sector Investment Program Workshop were from the Upper East, Upper West, Northern, Savannah and Northeast regions. It brought journalists and scientists together with the goal of fostering a two-way knowledge exchange on how to better communicate weather information in the media. Uh, my name is Fortune Adonal. I am a, a representer, a presenter at Ganga Radio in Jirapa in the Upper West region. We apologize for the wrong insert. We'll bring you more on that in subsequent bulletins. Now to the renovated National Museum of Ghana currently has in its possession cars used by two of Ghana's former presidents and a host of eye-catching historical artifacts that tell the Ghanaian story in a fascinating manner. Joseph Akable got access to walk through the gallery and gives you an idea of why you must visit this store of rich Ghanaian history. <music> Part of the roof started falling down. And so to be able to protect life and property, uh, then leadership decided to close it down to be able to do the renovation works. And so when I came, the place was closed down. And so um, we decided to work on. And so by God's grace, this is what we've been able to do and the president reopened it. The exhibition is titled Unity in Diversity. And as diverse as we are, we have several ethnic groups with different cultural practices and ways of living. The museum seeks to promote who we are, bring us together as one, so that when someone comes in, the person will first understand who we are as Ghanaians, our heritage, our history, where we've come from and where we aspire be in the nearest future. So this is a museum of ethnography, art and archaeology and the collections here speak to various aspects of our heritage. <laughs> Those 
vehicles were used by um, the Mercedes-Benz, the Land Cruiser, the Limousine, the Nissan Petro. They were used by former President Kufo. But the Cadillac was used by um, the late President um, Kwame Nkrumah. Yes. And so, um, we, in, in, in the near future, what we intend to, to do is to have an automobile museum with former president vehicle. We have a lot that we are going to work on. And so the vision is that in the near future, we are going to have a proper automobile museum that you, when you enter, you have different types of vehicles used by our former heads of states. Yes. all Ghanaians to come to the National Museum. And you see, um, I also want to entreat Ghanaians to come. When you go to the Western world, we have people going to the museum to donate, both in cash and in kind, and all sorts of other things. And so we entreat all Ghanaians to come to the National Museum and donate. And now, if you missed any of the major stories which featured in the news this week, Hano Dami has the wrap for you. The country on Monday woke up to sounds of parents demanding answers from managers of the Islamic Senior High School. Why? Because the police had shot into the students who were protesting bad nature of the roads around the school. Can you imagine? People who are not, I mean, holding hands. We will chase them to dormitories, we will chase them to, I mean, I mean, chasing them. Some of them, teachers who want to intervene and so forth, some of them will even arrest them. The police hierarchy interdicted the acting regional police commander and commenced investigations into the incident. The MP for the area, Francis Asensubwache, had this advice for the students. If there is any issue, they should report to their teachers. And the teachers will also in turn report to us. Motorists and commuters using the Accra Tema motorway got stranded as repair works on the stretch caused chaotic traffic. The, uh, the traffic will be about Kwanzaa. From Tema roundabout up to here, traffic in Kwan. The road is very, very bad. We are suffering in this road. The Roads and Highways Minister was at the site. We will be here and I'm prepared to stay here up to uh, uh, 5, 6 a.m. Some Ghanaians say they are unhappy about how the skyrocketing prices of goods and services is affecting the price of their favorite breakfast, Aouza Koko. The top red in the Koko. It's the same thing in the city. It's the same thing in the city. It's the same thing in the city. Caterers under the school feeding program withdrew their services, demanding increase in grants for feeding. You know, two times, last time and last two times, they didn't pay us. So for now, for us to get all the items at once, it's difficult for us. With this action, some foodstuffs began to rot. Um, I have disposed a carton of canned tomatoes because they had expired. The school feeding secretariat, meanwhile, had no idea exactly when the caterers would receive their grants. It starts with government to, to talk, but government, unfortunately, has failed and they are part. And so we expect government to, to, to do that. Other than that, we risk the risk of uh, not having kids. Let's hear from some supporters of aspiring executives of the New Patriotic Party. We had given uh, Monday to today for submission of nomination forms to the elections committee for further verification and then vetting will start. And as we celebrate fathers on Sunday, we hear from some of them about their guiding principles for fatherhood. To Sunday, I'll spend eight hours doing kangaroo for them, uh, two hours both, that'll be four hours, then I'll wait again in the afternoon, I'll do another four hours for them again. And that's a wrap of the week with me, Hannah Odami. 
And that was a wrap by Hannah Odami for you of the major news bulletin this week. We'll be right back with business. In business, some pig farmers are struggling to manage their farms post-African swine fever pandemic in the Ashanti region, which destroyed hundreds of farms. The situation has led to the dwindling fortunes of pork businesses in Kumasi. Prices of pork have seen an almost 100% increment. On food chain, Prince Apia looks at what is causing this rather worrying development. Pig farmer Akwesienchi is cleaning his pig style for the day as a routine before he feeds his piglet. I've been starting at church for about 15 years in the minya. I've been working on yama every day. From the share my family, we remember my mate minya. It's a thing I cry my team. For 15 years, he says this year has been very challenging for pig farmers. Before he and about 30 other pig farmers here at Ejiso are still struggling to bounce back to business. In fact, we've been off the job for the last seven months, I'm telling you. And then you can go back to the market and check. The, the production of pork in Kumase or Ashanti region has diminished. In fact, it, it, it's almost non-existent. Some of our people call and they, were, they are crying. When are you coming back? Since you people collapsed, the business has gone down. Not that you can't find pork outside. It's there. But then this day, the, because of that and the challenge of feed, the, the price of a pork has skyrocketed. And then uh, accessibility or availability of the animal is not as it used to be. Any honest Ashanti region patriot can tell you this. So the impact is massive. Their impact in the pig industry in the Ashanti region cannot be underestimated because they commanded a greater portion of the supply chain in the metropolis and beyond. Last time I visited where we used to prepare our feed, the place was virtually empty. The workers were sitting down there idle because Consider the number of people here who take turns to go there and prepare our feed. And all of us, all of a sudden, being off job. Couple with the fact that some of the poultry farmers are also struggling. So it's affecting the, 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 the business of other people whom we depend for our own. And then the rural banks around can also tell you how we were also contributing in, 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 in their banking sector. Because we take it, we, we send it, we, we draw it, we're going and coming. And all of a sudden, all this number of people going out. So it's affecting the system. Anybody, you can go and check with the uh, environmental officers at Ejusu here. We have a consistent record of contributing to the local funds. So you can check from their leisure the last time we contributed and how far. We showed you an evidence of payment of income tax consistently every year. That's not also coming. So as for the impact directly on us, but indirectly, it's also affecting others. This is one of the pig styles of the Ejiso cluster of pig farmers. This place used to be very active with a lot of activities and pigs. Until some months ago, the African swine fever swept through this place, killing more than 4,000 pigs here. Now these farmers are yet to bounce back after a seven month break. But unfortunately, they are being faced with another hurdle. 
Food chain comes your way every Saturday at 6 p.m. and repeated on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. Up next is sports. Senior advisor to the president, Yao Safumafo, has pledged total support to Kotoko Royals after becoming the first Achimda club to secure Ghana Premier League promotion. There's more on this report. Kotoku Royals is the first Achimoda side and the eighth Eastern Regional Club to secure promotion to the Ghana Premier League. They end the bragging rights after drawing with Tema Youth in the last fixture of the National Division 1 League. On Friday, the team paid a courtesy call on the senior advisor to the president, Honorable Ya Osafumafo, who hails from Achim, urged the players to remain disciplined and promised them of his unflinching support. Alexander Akwesiakwa is member of parliament of Achimoda. Starting from where we have come from, the Kotoku or the Achimanza area, the youth is well, very much um, uh, uh, rejuvenated. We're so happy that our, 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 our uh, team has finally uh, gone to the Premier Division. And um, it's going to be an encouragement to all other footballers or young ones who want to be in football. Well, if you look at Eastern Region, it's one of the biggest regions we have in Ghana. And um, in the scheme of things, we haven't had too many Eastern Regional clubs staying in the um, uh, Premiership for a very long time. But we are determined this time around to let Kotoku Royals stay forever. George Abwaje is Member of Parliament of Asine Manso Akroso constituency. He tells Joy Sports five MPs in the Kotoku area will ensure the Oda Sports Stadium meets GFA standards. I, with my colleagues, the other five or six MPs, we are going to give them maximum support in terms of uh, the, the stadium, how we are going to put the stadium in a good use or uh, in a proper level that meets international standard. Uh, we are going to do that uh, within the next two or three months for them to be able to use it for the September uh, Premiership. In the Waffle Zone 2 and the 17 tournament, Ghana has reached the semis after beating Togo at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. Here are highlights. Ajman Razak was waiting to towards the years. Apia. Now Razak back to Apia. Now Apia sends in a cross and that's the goal for the Ghanaians. Pius Adria makes it 1 0 for Ghana. Finally, the Ghanaians maybe potentially send Ghana into the semis. Straight away, it's Togo losing the ball in their own half. And is that man again? We did say that he's the danger man for them, Ghana. Andrew Apia, the cutback is good. And who is arriving? Well, cleared by Rashid is Razak up against Ahondo. It is Razak Salifu. He goes for goal. It's a beauty. An amazing goal from Abdul Razak Salifu. It is in the second, finding the goal that sends Ghana through to the semis and the host raw. It's a long ball over the top there. He's got the pace around this man, but he calms down, picks this moment, checks the ball to his right, and the effort is pure. Ajman has already scored from the spot. He steps up. Ajman and Ajman scores as Ghana leading Togo by three goals to nil in Cape Coast. It could certainly be the icing on the cake for the Ghanaians. And again, if you like, he created a penalty himself with a. That's it for this bulletin. For more news, visit myjoyonline.com. I am Mamisi Thompson. Thanks for your company.